Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and start. As Mike said, uh, I've done this one last week, uh, but uh, let's uh, go through it again to see um, if we get uh, questions and uh, thoughtful discussions about uh, combining BitOptive and API apps. Uh, so let's go uh, quickly through the agenda. And uh, so what essentially we're going to talk uh, through is why combining BitSock uh, and API apps? Uh, and obviously, because uh, we are familiar with BizSoft, but not so much with API apps, we have to talk about what are these API apps and what are they useful for. And we'll also talk about the Azure App Service, App Service Gateway, which is a very important piece in authentication uh, when talking to API apps. And we'll talk about this connectivity towards these API apps. So let's move to the next slide. And uh, I've, I've put here this slide because I want to uh, suggest that uh, why API apps and, and BizHop, it's all about the hybrid solutions, so the mixing uh, the cloud and the on-premise world, uh, which obviously we'll, we have to live with what we have. A lot of investments have gone into uh, BizHop server uh, when it comes to integration in Microsoft Platform. Uh, and now all the innovation comes in, in, uh, in Azure and uh, so it makes sense to join this, both of these worlds uh, in, into one so that we have the best of both. And so moving to my slide, uh, so it's all about the hybrid integration, isn't it? It's all about mixing and making sure that we are um, able to integrate and leave with the best of both. Uh, and so there are many reasons why we, we would want to talk from this of API apps. One of them is, the API apps that you have uh, in out of the box in the marketplace for Azure Azure API apps, uh, and one of those big examples is the connectors. And this is because uh, we, if if you you know BizTalk very well, you know that there are a lot of BizTalk adapters, and that they are part of the the value. One of the biggest parts of the values of, of BizTalk, which is the ability to connect and to better develop. Uh, the, for, for those particular endpoints uh, and adapters. And so we, we haven't seen many new adapters over the years, uh, but if we look at the API apps uh, that are connector of the connector type, we can see that um, we have quite a few uh, that are to the new SaaS-based applications, for instance, and so there is uh, quite a lot of, um, of value into tapping into the, those connectors and those API apps provided in, in, in um, uh, in the marketplace of Azure. And then, obviously, uh, the, it makes uh, sense to connect to an API app and mix this uh, on-premise world with the, with the cloud, especially when you are connecting to solutions that run in the cloud uh, already. Uh, and we can think of these as, let's say, uh, connectors of um, uh, Salesforce or Dynamics or Dropbox or SkyDrive, et cetera. So we, we can have quite a, quite a lot of, uh, of value there. Then there is also the, the value on reusing the current investments. Uh, and that is obviously BizDoc uh, itself uh, in, in its all, all complete uh, set of val value provided by it. Uh, a lot of integrations, a lot of customers have, have built all of their integration solutions in, uh, on top of BizDoc. And uh, you don't need to change it, especially in scenarios where you are doing uh, integration within the enterprise, so EAI. Uh, that doesn't go beyond the boundary. It even makes sense to keep this off. Uh, and, but you might also want to expose some of your on-premise capabilities up to the cloud or by consuming um, data from the cloud. And obviously, having the I've already used the cloud world quite a bit. One of the things that you can do is benefit from the cloud scale, so the hyperscale capabilities. You have capacity on demand. It's quite easy and straightforward to, to scale, and so that's a big benefit that you can take from, um, from using API apps or, or any cloud-based integration solution. And then the last one is about introducing us to the lightweight integration world where you might not want to have a highly durable and persistable uh, and persistent transactions uh, going uh, for your uh, integration scenarios. And so you might want to expose part of your integration scenarios um, and have uh, part of that flow uh, to, to, to be lightweight, which is exactly what we have in the cloud today. So quite a lot of reasons to combine BizTalk 
an API app. So let's uh, talk about what is an API app after all. And so this is all, it's all about being a platform for APIs. Um, so that's where you can build, you can host, you can consume and distribute APIs. Uh, so it's not only about what's available from Microsoft, it's also available, uh, it's also about what you're gonna build in terms of APIs that you want to expose. And not only, only expose, but you can also uh, uh, host and, and uh, also sell and distribute your API. And obviously you are going to benefit from uh, the, the enterprise grade uh, features of the cloud, uh, such as security, the, the simple way of accessing, the fact that you ha can have hybrid connectivity, you can have connectivity to SaaS applications, and even uh, an automatic SDK uh, generation This is on, on, on the usage of, on building and deploying an API app. So quite, quite a lot of value here. Um, so what does a HAP API app have? Uh, so a few things that are important from the BizTalk uh, integration standpoint. One of them is the gateway. The gateway is a very important piece when uh, when taking uh, when talking to an API app. This is where all the calls to the API will be routed to. And, and here you can also manipulate how you want your API to behave. You can configure how your um, of your how the authentication to your API apps will work. And essentially there is an AP, uh, uh, sorry, a gateway for the whole uh, resource group of, um, so there is this concept in, in Azure where we have a resource group, it's just a logical grouping of resources. And for each of these resource groups, uh, there is a gateway where you can manage all of these API access uh, uh, for all the API apps stored in that particular resource group. Quite an important piece. That's where we will authenticate again, essentially. Then we also have uh, a framework for documenting and to make the API easy to discover. Uh, so one of the important metrics of an API is the ability for you to call it. Uh, and to call it, obviously, uh, as quick as possible. Uh, ideally, you want to, to, that you take just a very uh, little amount of time between reading briefly about the documentation of an API and being able to successfully call it. Uh, and so uh, with the, the, the API apps, you have a Swagger built in, and so you can automatically generate Swagger config, uh, documentation, um, and that will allow you to better consume uh, and, and and know about what is possible to do with that particular API. And then there are a certain type of API app that is called the connector, and it makes it easy to connect to other applications, SaaS applications in particular, uh, such as Salesforce, Office 365, etc. That's the, the connectors I was talking about before. It's an important type of API app, and it provides connectivity uh, towards different types of, of SaaS applications. You can think of these as the adapters for the cloud. I think that's the best way to, to see it. And let's uh, take a look at uh, an API app. So essentially what I'm going to show now is just a, a walkthrough. I've created a, a calculator API app, and I'm going to, uh, through it just to show you how easy it is to create this API app and uh, how does it look like when deployed into the call. So I'm just going to switch my screens. And so here we are in uh, in Visual Studio. So the way I created this uh, API app is by simply implementing the basic calculation uh, the calculation methods in a calculator. Uh, and the, the file you just see here is just how easy it is for you to document um, this API app with Swagger. You just need to go into the Swagger config CS and you just have to uncomment these two lines, which will create uh, which will make this project automatically generate uh, Swagger UI uh, with uh, with all the information that you need to consume and and, uh, and uh, document um, on these API. And then this is just a a web API app, uh, very simple. It has a few controllers. Uh, you can see I have a, a, a controller add controller, which has a method. It's on it. It adds these two values. And, and returns it back to the original caller. So very simple, as you would imagine, for a calculator that's just doing basic calculation. And um, and so what I've done then is I deployed this into uh, 
an API app in Azure. So that's something you can do by publishing the application. And uh, and this has generated uh, that application in my um, uh, Azure account. As you can see here, I have here the API apps list. And you can see I have my calculator application. And uh, because this calculator application has a Swagger file, uh, you will see that I have here automatically uh, my um, API definition. I can see all the available methods I can call. Uh, and then we can also see that uh, the API app uh, has a, a direct URL, which I, if I navigate to, I'll be able to see the uh, my my website. So essentially, under the covers, this is a, a API app. And because I enable Swagger UI, you will be able to see uh, uh, the, the the UI for uh, the Swagger UI, which describes my my API and has all the documented methods for that I that I can call and how uh, you, we can actually call it. Uh, and alternatively, I can also uh, call the API, obviously, and this is a calculator, so it will, in this case, add, and I can change this for any values, and, and it will do the calculation and return the XML with a return value. So it's a very simple API, so that it's very easy to understand how we, we, we're going to interact this with, the, with this stuff. Uh, another thing I want to show now is uh, that this is how, how it is configured in terms of authentication. Uh, let me quickly show you here the gateway because, like I mentioned, what is controlling all the interactions with this uh, API app is the gateway for this um, for this resource group. And so, if I click here on the gateway, you will be able to see that uh, I have here. Uh, just what uh, is called a gateway and the important part that I want to show you is uh, what you can do in terms of authentication so I'm going to click here in settings and you will be able to see uh, how have I configured this application for authentication purposes and uh, so because one of the values of this uh, gateway is that it provides automatic identity against a few um, a few identity providers, the most well-known ones. So we have the Microsoft account, we have Facebook, Twitter, Google, and uh, Azure Active Directory. And actually, I configured two of them. I have the Microsoft account configured with a with an app ID, uh, with a client ID and client secret. And then I have also Azure Active Directory, uh, where I have a client ID um, as well, and the, the tenants that are part of this authentication. In this case, you didn't see any change in any. Um, failure on, on calling this API because I was already logged on. But I'm going to show you how does it look like when we try to access an API app that is um, beyond, beyond, behind the gateway, which has identity providers enabled. And you can see, I, I just tried to access the website, and it gives me a JSON error message back saying that no default login policy is set, so I should authenticate first, essentially. That's, that's what, what this really means. And I'm going to use my Azure Active Directory, and I'm going to use the user. Uh, let me see if I remember correctly. It looks like I don't remember, so let me go and copy. Okay, so now I am I am authenticated with a user that is, belongs to that Azure Active Directory, and uh, I I authenticated against my um, my um, gateway, and so now if I want to call the API, I can do it. So let me just copy the URL of the API again, and now if I go and call my API, I will now be able to access because I have the, the appropriate token to call the API. So you can actually see if I uh, do a network uh, call, you will be able to see my the, the correct uh, 
tokens being sent uh, for authentication purposes. So let me quickly show you the network communication. And you can see here in the others uh, that uh, a Zumo authentication code was sent for uh, to be able to uh, authenticate me against this API app. Uh, so successfully calling the API. All right, that's all I wanted to show you for now. It's just the API app. How can we authenticate to it? How can we call the API? So let's switch back to the presentation. And let's talk about the security of API apps. So, so security, as you've seen, is one of the three features of API apps. Uh, you, you can opt to use multiple ways to secure the, the, your API app. Like I showed you in the, in the example uh, I have, I'm using the API, uh, sorry, the app service gateway. Uh, but you can also have a do-it-yourself authentication, like any other web application, you can, you can build it. Or you could also use the Azure, Azure API management for uh, uh, having like a, a to manage essentially the API, including having security to it. Okay, so let's talk about the what about the free that the free service that comes uh, with this app service for identity, and um, and so it supports the most popular identity providers as I mentioned, including the Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Accounts, Google, Twitter, and Facebook, and. So to better understand this, we should also uh, now take a quick look at um, at the gateway architecture that is uh, what's interfacing uh, the calls to the API app. And so as I mentioned before, every Azure resource group uh, that contains API apps or mobile apps includes a gateway. So it's when you provision any of these two types, API apps or mobile apps, uh, the gateway is provisioned for you. Uh, and so you can... Um, so this will come with a with a series of benefits, and this uses OAuth under the covers, and it provides uh, a, a few uh, improvements in terms of uh, authentication. And as you can see there, any request that uh, goes to a, an API app will go through the uh, through the gateway. The gateway will conf will check if the token that you are providing to the gateway uh, is secure, uh, and if there is authentication required, it will. Um, Verify if it's correctly configured, and then if if so, uh, it will provide it will send the re the, the request uh, down to the API app. Or if it's disabled, so if you have uh, public access to API app, all the requests are routed directly to the to your API app. So some of the benefits of uh, having this uh, gateway are uh, it's easy to monitor and troubleshoot. Um, authentication related traffic, for instance, it's easier to debug uh, the application. Uh, and obviously, you, you ship essentially all the security aspects to the gateway, so you don't have to go through that development cycle of making sure that you have correctly implemented security into your application. And there are multiple ways you can um, you can authenticate against a, 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 an API app. So essentially, these are different ways to to get the identity token that you need uh, to communicate with uh, with the, the, the API app. This one is the, what what is called the client flow identity, and this is all about the client uh, communicating directly with identity provider. And uh, what you can see here is uh, the the application that is. Uh, trying to access uh, the, the the API app is authenticating against the identity provider. It's receiving a token, then sending the access token that it got from the identity provider down to the uh, gateway, and then receiving back a Zumo token, which will allow to do the subsequent calls uh, to the API app. And actually, this is the, the type of communication, the kind of flow that we will use for our desktop implementation. We will use a client flow identity. And uh, we also have the server flow identity for API apps, and that is exactly what you saw me doing uh, when authenticating to that particular API app. So uh, it, essentially, the client application relies on the gateway to communicate with the identity provider to initiate login. And uh, what 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 happens is that I will uh, go into the try to navigate to my API app. I will be requested to redirect to my identity provider. I will then fill in my details and I will uh, the token will be sent 
down to the gateway, and then the, the gateway will send me a Zumo token uh, uh, that I will use for uh, further authentication requirements. So that is a, a, a different flow. So it also helps. Um, it, 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 the idea of this flow is that it removes the need for uh, knowing how to communicate with that instance provider. You just need to be redirected to it, and then you can um, you can continue accessing your API app. So what about now BizTalk connecting to the cloud? So there is uh, some ways that you can connect to the cloud and uh, and uh, how to connect to these API apps. So the the most uh, the most obvious way to connect uh, based off to the, to these uh, web APIs is by using a web based adapter. And we're talking about any of the web based adapters, uh, but in this case, because I created a web API application which is REST based, it makes more sense to use the the web HTTP adapter. Um, you can also use other ways to access the, these, obviously using custom codes, but you can do inline sense. Uh, you can do that in a mapping functoid, or you can do that in an inline in an orchestration. So let's take a look at how to connect uh, to the API app. And so as I said, the WCF Web HTTP adapter, it seems to be the most natural choice. Um, and uh, so we will, in, the, in the case of API apps, what we've seen so far, is that we will have a Swagger API available, uh, and we will also be talking with REST, and then we can use JSON on XML as the message format for um, for connecting to with these API apps. So because of the of these uh, information of these uh, available uh, capabilities, that's why I use the Web HTTP adapter as, a, as an example on how to connect to it. Uh, I did use XML for connecting purposes, but obviously you can use uh, JSON as well. Uh, and uh, to do that, you essentially have to use a, a, a pipeline that does the serialization and deserialization of the uh, messages, as uh, JSON messages as they come in and go out of this stuff. This is a, a well-known capability, and uh, and this is what uh, you can definitely use for uh, for communicating in a JSON-based form. So uh, next thing, how to authenticate with the API apps? Because obviously, I, I, I tried to, to access the application, as you've seen, from a private window. And you saw that I could not directly call the API. I had to go and authenticate first. That is the server-based authentication that I've done there. But we uh, we should choose, in this case, uh, client flow authentication for this. Stuff. And this is mainly due to the uh, nature of uh, what we can do inside BizTalk. BizTalk doesn't have a user that will go and authenticate. And so uh, we need something to get authenticated directly with the authentication provider. And, uh, and so we can use uh, a, a scenario. So what, what the scenario I've used is by uh, connecting to, with the Azure Active Directory, which, which has a client for, uh, sorry, client side SDK for authentication purposes. And so you don't need to, uh, to redirect the authentication and uh, it essentially allows for server-to-server -server credential uh, credentials to be exchanged. And so uh, that, that is the scenario that uh, I have used. So client flow authentication, uh, and uh, I'm using Azure Active Directory as an authentication client, uh, and which does not require authentication redirection, and using Active Directory authentication library for uh, the SDK for, for retrieving these passwords. So let's... Uh, Let's take a quick look at uh, what I have done here. So I'm going to switch again uh, to my um, this, uh, to my other screen, and I'll go through the BizTalk solution to show you exactly what I have here. So I've uh, I've used a very simple example for um, for uh, performing these API uh, apps integration. And what we have here, you can think of these as a pass through orchestration that ha uh, has a port that is a request response port and called the request uh, solicit response port uh, that will be the API application. And the reason why I'm using an orchestration here is I decided to use the um, 
the authentication, sorry, the, the required customization for, for BizDoc inside the orchestration. And, and I will show that right now so that you can understand exactly what I'm doing here uh, in terms of uh, making sure this is capable of, of speaking with my API app. And uh, what, I, what I had to do to use this uh, orchestration-based approach was to um, essentially use a dynamic port and then set up all the WCF web HTTP adapter uh, required context properties uh, to be able to correctly communicate with my destination. And so some of that uh, is uh, uh, obviously doing the URL mapping because this is a REST call and, uh, and then uh, identifying what is the verb that we are going to use to, to call as well as uh, a few other additional options like what are the variables in the context that will be mapped to the REST call. And then I'm also mapping those, so I have a few context properties that I have defined, uh, which are the operator and the uh, A and B um, parameters to my, my API app, which I'm getting from the message. And then I have uh, all the WCF related, uh, additional WCF related properties, like uh, the security mode and, uh, and, and a few other things. The most important part here is this one, which is the WCF HTTP headers. And it's all about uh, providing two additional headers that are not there by default. One of them is that I'm, I'm talking in, in XML, and the other one, the real important one, is the F, this XZUMO authentication token. And to do that, I've, I've created a DLL in my project that uh, just gets the headers that I need uh, to be able to authenticate this. So that's what I'm going to show you next. So this is uh, the code I needed to create to be able to, to me communicate, retrieve a token, and provide it back to BizDoc. This is using that uh, Azure Active Directory SDK, client SDK for communication. And so it's essentially um, getting an authentication, creating an authentication co uh, context client credentials using uh, a, an ID and a, a secret and then um, I'm calling the authentication context to acquire a token for that particular uh, BizTalk, um, sorry, gateway from that my BizTalk uh, related uh, resource group and then I am uh, using the app service client to be able to retrieve um, what is it, uh, to, uh, to retrieve my token, my JSON token, my Zumo token, from the, that app service client uh, request. And then you can see here, I'm retrieving the authentication token. Um, so essentially, I'm logging in that app service, providing my Azure Active Directory uh, token, and then I'm calling, I'm retrieving and returning the authentication token back to BizDoc. So I, I just wanted to do this because just to show you how, how short it is, what you need to do is just very straightforward. And this, I, I use the Azure Active Directory, that's the one that has the, the easy to use SDK for client-side authentication. And so it's uh, it's very easy to, to implement it this way. And it shows uh, exactly what you, what is required and how can we use it to, to push into BizDoc. And so essentially then, uh, obviously the, the message I construct here, I send it to that uh, API app. This is just a, a REST-based uh, endpoint. And uh, I receive the message back and I, and I send it to the original caller. Um, so that's all that's going on there. Uh, there is a way to also implement these in, um, in a send port, in a static send port, uh, which I've done here. Uh, as just as an example, so I'm going to review this configuration. Uh, the only reason I use the dynamic port is because we need to generate the token every time we execute. Uh, it, it will the, the Azure Active Directory uh, token and, um, and and Zumo token will be cached, and and so it won't be calling it every time really, but it will uh, be executed every time and retrieved from the cache. Uh, and essentially, what we have here, uh, just to show you, because that's the exact same thing that I'm doing on the on the orchestration, uh, we have a URI of the API, and then we have the operation mapping, where we have here operator and then the, the parameters being used. Uh, then we have a, a variable mapping, where we map the, the variables in the web API uh, method, 
as well as the, the context property, and that's being mapped here. Then we don't we have um, just the normal settings uh, trans using transport security, and then uh, in the end we have the outbound HTTP headers. That's where the secret is. But this Zumo token that I created here, uh, it's probably invalid by now because uh, I just created it at some point and added it as as a, as a fixed token to the message. And then here in the end, because this is a get method, it shouldn't have a body, so I'm suppressing the the, the body from from being sent to the web API. And so this is just to show what has been done in terms of the, the API. Uh, sorry, in terms of the send port, uh, because obviously dynamic ports are always a bit more tricky to understand exactly what they are doing. Okay, so let's um, switch back. So there are a few things that we that can be explored in terms of uh, this integration, and um, so uh, one of the thing one of the scenarios that I think it's important to to uh, to, to think about is uh, what about because I, the, in the example I've just described that we are talking about invoking something in the cloud, an API app that is uh, connecting. Um, uh, sorry, BizTalk that is connecting to an API app. Uh, we might want to also think uh, calling BizTalk from an API app, and for that I, I'm suggesting as a, as a possibility the, the usage of uh, hybrid connection. And then another another interesting thing that I, I thought about is uh, BizTalk is all of, uh, uh, BizTalk productivity is all about uh, how fast can I create a solution, and obviously. Um, since we are connecting to application uh, API apps, and there is metadata for them in the Swagger uh, that uh, Swagger definition that is created along with the project that you build, it would be very useful to have in Bistal a way for you to um, generate all the all the artifacts that are required for you from Bistal to communicate with these API apps. So generating schemas and authentication codes automatically would be interesting features to include there. And from last week's uh, discussion, we also uh, discussed about creating a pipeline component or a WCF endpoint behavior for inserting the required headers, depending on, on the type of authentication required for your applications. So it's kind of easy to imagine a pipeline a component or WCF endpoint behavior that would require what is the authentication provider that you want to use, and then which uh, client ID or application ID and secrets you want to use to communicate with the, your application. So once you have that you you have that information in your pipeline or WCF endpoint configuration, it would be very easy for your ports to have the correct headers and successfully authenticate against the application, the API app, and and, and have a very easy integration there. And so, uh, well, let's uh, take a look and see it executing. So I'm switching back, and let's do that. <laughs> So to, to execute, what I have done is uh, I'm, I'm using SoQI, and you can see here I, I'm calling, calling my local endpoint, so it's a local host based on calculator, and essentially, this is an application I have uh, in my local, the application I showed you in Visual Studio, but now obviously deployed in my local machine. And uh, this is the proxy I was talking about. It takes a message, um, a SOAP message as, a, as an input, and um, Essentially, what I'm going to do is uh, invoke it and uh, and um, see what the result is. And essentially, as I call this message, there will, there will be a, 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 a sorry a receive location of the type um, soap that is going to be used. And then on the other end, there will be uh, the web HTTP endpoint. So if I click play, ideally what I will see is something very, very simple and straightforward, which is uh, a reply coming back from my service, adding up these two numbers. And so if I 
review that, we can see here an XML is being uh, parsed back and which is the, the sum of these uh, two numbers. I just input it here in the source message. And obviously this, uh, this uh, is okay, but uh, what we should actually do is go and review and to see what it was best of doing at the time. And so let's uh, quickly do that. We can go and see the tracking information uh, for this stuff. And we can see now all the execution that has happened. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start my message flow analysis from uh, the orchestration. Uh, but essentially what we can see here is that we have a, a path to receive, uh, sorry, a path to receive message. Um, that was the original request. Uh, we called the, it invoked the orchestration. The orchestration then um, sent a message to my API, API application, which you can see here. And then uh, you can see um, a reply what came back here, which came through a path to receive a uh, pipeline. And then the message was sent out to the destination. So if we want to go and look at, uh, let's take a look at um, the messaging. So let's see message events. And we can see here uh, what I just described. So we received the uh, unparsed uh, message first. Then we call invoke that other, uh, the web HTTP. And what, what I want to, what the reason why I want to come here is because I want to go and show you the, um, the message bodies, because I think I have enabled um, message body tracking. Let me just confirm, uh, because that would uh, show me the, the what the details that have gone through that. So I did indeed. So what I might need to do is to just force, so use my visual fields and force the tracking, <laughs> the tracking of message bodies to be processed. Yeah, and with a stop SQL agent, that's not going to happen. Okay, so now I should have my tracking information here. And uh, we can see the, the actual message that was submitted by looking here into the context of this uh, message. And we can see here the context properties that were, uh, that are related to that web HTTP adapter where I can, I pass on the values of uh, that I want to add and which operator I want to execute, in this case, add. And then we see the HTTP adders, and that's the most important one. You can see here, I generated a token and I, I added on, I added it onto the HTTP adders uh, that goes to this endpoint. And then we have all the other normal uh, endpoints, uh, sorry, configuration to be able to communicate through the web HTTP adapter. Um, but essentially you can see that component just generated that token and send it out uh, to, the, uh, to the API app. And uh, if we wanted to take advantage of uh, what an API app uh, provides us, we would be able to see uh, the, that the API app was actually executed. And if we do refresh this, I think we, we would be able to see uh, those invocations I've just done. I think I can zoom it in. Yeah, that's what's a few minutes back. And uh, so that, that's one of the advantages of having this. So I will be able to control what my API app is doing and, and know a little bit more uh, because of the gateway and I, I'm having the free security and also some level of monitoring and analysis provided by uh, the gateway. So I've just done a few executions and we will see that within a few seconds we will start to see that, that number of requests going up. And uh, we can see here a summary of uh, eventual problems that happened to it. So uh, again, so the benefit of the cloud, you had all of these for free. Uh, so you host it as an API app. It's, um, uh, it, it comes with a with a bunch of advantages, including these uh, metrics that are uh, are provided by uh, by the, the platform itself.
I was just hoping to wait a couple of seconds and see it, but it, it seems like it's not replying fast enough. So I will switch back to the slides. And so essentially you've seen, uh, you've seen it all, you've seen it working. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the patience of hearing me and uh, I'd like to, I think, open for discussion and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Hi, Ricardo, just Mike again. Thanks very much for that. So um, I think we've, we've only got a few questions that have come in so far. Um, so the first one is, um, is the WCF web HTTP adapter um, I assume that's the binding for the BizTalk WCF adapter. Is that available in BizTalk 2010? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe even over record, well, I would guess if it's not, you can easily enough add it. Yeah, I, I think it's not. I think it's in 2013 it was introduced. Uh, but I think you can use WCF Custom and, and use it anyway. So that, that yeah. shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. Um, I think we've got one question on Twitter, which is, um, for authentication, could we encapsulate your code as a pipeline component to use it for static ports? But I think um, we, we had a good conversation about this the other day, didn't we? And yeah. um, I think that the general consensus was that that's probably something you quite easily do as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, I, I went I went at least three quarters of it all, all the way, but then I, I, I start getting some configuration issues and I didn't solve them in time. Uh, otherwise, I would have shown that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not, not a big deal. It's more my my, knowledge, my remembering the SDK for pipeline components is not something I use every day, so it took me more time yeah. than I thought. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so we've got another question which was, um, can you show us configuring basic authentication from an API app from BizTalk. Basic authentication, you mean username and password authentication type of access? Yeah. Well, that would fall under the do-it-yourself authentication, uh, I would imagine. And uh, one one approach, and I think uh, the API uh, so API management has the capability of doing that, uh, of creating basic authentication, and and so you can use API um, app in front, sorry, API um, management in front of it. Um, yeah, I can see someone saying this is under gateway identity. So the gateway identity only allows you to either not have authentication or have one of these identity providers with authentication. Uh, so th those are the options provided by it. If you choose not to have any authentication, you can always build your own authentication, which basic authentication will be one of the possible types. It sounds like that's something that, that I'd hope they put in and as, a, as an out-of-the-box thing in the future mind, doesn't it? Yeah. Because it's you know you can see that being something a lot of people would do, and it's, it's a fairly standard sort of request, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, can you show the API configuration in the orchestration? Is it the same as provided for any other web service wizard? Well, uh, I did not use uh, any any wizard uh, for con consuming the API app. I created a port myself, uh, so that uh, I, I, I use the wizard to expose the orchestration, and but that's just plain old based off. Uh, and then uh, on the API app con connection, well, let me go and, and share the screen again. Uh, So here on the API uh, on the API app, uh, so essentially this port will be the one that is the uh, calling the API application. And here you can see this is a dynamic port, uh, and uh, I'm not doing much here because everything when you everything that you do when using a, a dynamic port is uh, in the context properties that you send. And you can see all the pro all the properties that I have specified here. So there are a few messages specific uh, context properties and also the address and type of the of the port is also defined here. So this is all you need to do. And, and uh, as I said, what, the way I configured this port here uh, is exactly the, uh, like the static port that I used uh, here on the on these uh, send ports. Uh, and this is where you can see the only thing that is specific for the API app is the specific 
HTTP headers that are required for authentication purposes. So I've got a couple more questions. Um, the best talk infra you used in this demo is on cloud. It, and it's on premise. Is it feasible to use BizTalk 2013 deployed on cloud? Yeah. Uh, well, the, since there are no limitations in using uh, BizTalk in in uh, in the infrastructure as a service on Azure for testing and the development purposes, I could have definitely have done it. Uh, since it's not yet um, uh, valid for or supported for running um, production, uh, sorry, highly available production environments, uh, then uh, you, you cannot do it for those purposes, essentially. But uh, there is no, no limitation in, in using it uh, on the cloud as well. Okay. Um, how do we generate schemas from Swagger automatically? So um, I guess that, that's the one where I'll... Um, I'll find, while you're answering that, um, Ricardo, I'll find Kent's um, Kent's user voice thing to share with people. Yeah, sure. So essentially, when when you want to generate schemas, you can use all the schema generation capabilities that you have uh, with BizTalk, and uh, there are schema generation capabilities from JSON, which some of these web API apps can can have. Uh, uh, but essentially, that does it from um, from um, uh, it does it from an instance of a JSON message, not from uh, the Swagger definition, and so that is currently not available. And uh, that's one thing that uh, uh, Kent has uh, has actually uh, put in as a request for the the logic apps and API apps. Uh, and as as Mike oh. just answered on the on the question, yeah, on the on the Q and A there, I've just put the link. So there's a user voice feature request where. Quite a lot of people have, have been requesting this, so there's something similar yeah. to the um, Consume WCF service, um, where we can just point to a Swagger address and generate schemas. So if you like that idea, um, stick your name to the to the load of other people who've asked for that feature. Yeah, yeah, and this will this ideally will work something similar to uh, pointing to a whistle and uh, and have the schemas generated. So it's pretty much the same concept. Cool. So the, the questions seem to have dried up a little bit. I'll just quickly um, double check Twitter again. Uh, nope. And website's quiet. So if there's no other questions, um, again, thank you to Ricardo for joining us and uh, sharing that one with us. Um, really good turnout tonight. So I think we've got about 60 people online, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, the So we'll send out comms during the week about the next session which Johan Cooper will be hosting. And, uh, but otherwise, just thanks for everyone for coming. And um, if anyone's got any um, ideas for topics they'd like to see at future sessions, or if anybody wants to present at a future session, um, please drop me a line on email or via Twitter, and um, we'll, we'll have a chat about making that happen. But otherwise, thanks, everyone. Hope you all have a great evening. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye.